Welcome to Secrets of Aussie Online Entrepreneurs. I'm Bernadette Schwert and I have with me today Mark Middow. Now Mark is a true entrepreneur in that he's got numerous businesses, two of which are the Five Minute Business and Social Empire. And he's joining me today to share some insights and tips on how other online entrepreneurs can get started or if they already have a business, how they can maximise their online presence. So welcome. Thanks for joining me, Mark. Thanks for having me on, Bernadette. It's a pleasure. So let's talk awesome, about... Bernadette. Um, let's talk about the five minute business first. I love that title. So talk about yeah. what that means. Well, the title just came to me one night. It was 5 a.m. and it hit me in the face. I woke up and I said, this is what I've got to call my book. I was writing a book at the time and it was about a framework where you can bring an idea to life really fast because that, that's what I'd done with um, my other businesses. I um, you know, had a sort of a little framework where I could bring an idea to life really fast, um, you know, using WordPress and getting a template up that, that looks really high end but cheap. And um, yeah, I had all these different ideas for the book, you know, like how to build an online business, that sort of stuff, and it just sounded really cheesy. You know, so five minute business just hit me in the face and you know, everything I do with online stuff, I try to automate as much as possible, I try to make it easy for people. And so that that's why I, um, I came up with the title and it's really just a a framework for people to follow to bring an idea to life really fast online, similar to like what I did with, with my businesses at the moment. It's interesting about uh, bringing things to life quickly, uh, Mike, because in the interviews that I've done with entrepreneurs, one of the key things they all say is that you've just got to act quickly. Get something up. It may not be perfect, but get something up and test it and stress test it and you know, get some research and get some feedback and go from there. So that was obviously your point of view as well, would it be? Yeah, exactly. I think um, a, a friend of mine said this to me, uh, Daniel Priestley. Uh, he said, "Prolific beats perfect," and um, you know that's that's what you've got to be. You've got to be out there first, rather than trying to get the thing perfect. I think if you, you if you're happy with your your first product, then you've spent too long on it. <laughs> so uh, you know, a, another entrepreneur I know who had sold a couple of businesses for multi millions um, also said to me, "You build a tractor first, then you turn it into a Ferrari." Yeah, and that's that's always been my philosophy to get something up, get people using it. If it's good, you know, keep making it better and better, and and the success will flow from that. Yeah, let's talk about the five minute business. What are some of the tips that you you've got in the book for people with an online idea but nowhere to begin? Well, the first I've got got a framework that I call the three C. So it's castle content communication. So what I think um, you know really helps you succeed online is by having the good website in place first, having the right branding. And I show some ways that you can get world class branding and a great website that looks like it costs you fifty thousand dollars. I show you how to get those things for up under a couple hundred dollars. Um, which is a great start because there's so many industries out there that that you can tap into and and look so much better than everyone else by just following a, a nice little framework. Um, so, so that's my first sort of tip is getting people into a, an awesome looking state straight away so they look like they can match it with some of their other competitors straight away, straight off the bat. And then um, obviously the content area is, is, is creating this content that your target market's going to, going to like and, and, and enjoy and start to resonate with. And then the communication aspect is sending that content that you're creating and getting yourself out there and, and getting some media, getting some PR. and um, you know, I call it lighting spot fires on the web, getting on forums, getting on blogs, commenting, getting yourself out there to really promote your, your castle that you've created and the content. So that, that's sort of been my little philosophy. Excellent. And just a quick tip, you're obviously a WordPress fan, you, you recommend people go to WordPress, but there's got to be more to it than that. What are some of the tips that I know people will be thinking, well, you know, how do you do that for a hundred hundred odd dollars instead of fifty thousand? Just a quick tip or quick two tips. Quick, quick, quick tips. The reason I love WordPress is because you can't just see it as a website. It's a it's an online marketing platform. Okay, so you've got full flexibility. You can do whatever you want with it. You can add plugins which, you know, make pop ups. You know, get people and, and, and increase the, the amount of people in your database and stuff like that. So a quick tip, but if you want to get yourself into a WordPress site that looks like it costs you $50,000, jump onto themeforest.com or I think it's .net, even one will work, 
and, and go looking for some WordPress templates on that and you can, you'll can you find yourself, you know, if you look for something in your niche, niche say you're a, um, a personal trainer, search for a personal trainer theme and you can find themes on that that will make you stand up in, in comparison to all the other, other people out there because, you know, a lot of people just build their own websites or get something custom made and they got it made a couple of years ago, they spent so much money on it, they don't want to change it. So they look tight and old, but you can pop into that market. And you can grab yourself a theme for fifty dollars that looks like it's cost fifty thousand dollars, and you can look amazing. So that would be my big hot tip for that. Fantastic, fantastic. So let's talk about some of the um, the biggest mistakes that you think online entrepreneurs make starting out. Can you tap into what you think they do wrong that uh, maybe they 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 shouldn't, and if they had a bit more experience, they wouldn't. Yeah, I think um, jumping into ventures too quickly, I think, is a problem. You know, without doing the research, it's definitely always been a big problem for a lot of people. I think that um, also, you know, getting into too many overheads too early is a huge, huge mistake, and not getting advisors on board as well. Um, you know, so there's a lot of different things that you've got to look at that, you know, that's just three off the top of my head that have really affected me as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, they're the sort of main things I'd probably look out for. Um, how do people know, yeah, Mark, um, how do they know it's not a good idea? How do they assess an idea if they think it's good, but in retrospect they realise it's not? But what are some of the, the warning signs we should look for about a bad idea? A warning sign, I think would be if you check it up on, on Google Keyword Planner and there isn't much traffic going to the, that particular keyword. So let's say you had an idea for um, some natural therapy product, um, you know, for example, some sort of acne cure, and then you looked up how much acne cures are getting searched into, into Google, although they would be getting searched heaps. Let's say they weren't getting searched that much. Um, you, you know, straight away you know that there's not much of a market for it, so that, that should really raise some red flags. I think um, obviously checking traffic numbers of some other websites that are similar to you. So you can use a site called SimilarWeb and that allows you to check the, the traffic numbers of particular websites. What's that called? SimilarWeb? SimilarWeb.com. So that, yep. that allows you to say, yep, .com. So you could pop any website in there and you could look up your competitors and you know look at the main websites of, of the appearing number one for that particular industry. Oh yeah. And then what and then what you can do is, is you can see how much traffic they're getting. If it, if it shows no data and there's not much traffic coming through, then you can pretty much estimate that there's not going to be a huge market for, for whatever product you're going to think of. Excellent. Excellent. Um, some more ones? I've got yeah. a couple more. Yeah. I reckon Everyone is, is also similar to this. You go on Facebook and you check the fan page number, uh, the fan numbers of some other competitors as well. So you just jump on Facebook, you search for the keyword, you see if there's any fan pages around that particular niche, and then you see their fan numbers. And you can also check um, ad if you if you set up an ad, and you go to the advertising area, you can sort of see how many people, if you, if you do the targeting area, you can see how many people like certain things. So you can pop in keywords there as well and it'll tell you the reach on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So that, that's always a really good, good um, way as well. Definitely my top, top view. Yeah, fantastic and quite niche. And things I haven't heard before, so that's fantastic. So let's talk about um, what, what are the three things that you think entrepreneurs get hung up on before they begin that they really shouldn't? I think the technical side, um, if people you know, are attempting to do something online they can't work out the technical side, they can become stressed out and it, it, it paralyzes a lot of people from moving further with their venture. Um, you know, it becomes a hurdle they can't get over. So to overcome that, I think you know, to employ a developer like from o Odesk or something like that, mm -hmm. um, your own little helper who can do things for you that, that takes two minutes for them which can save you a lot of heartache because a lot of the time you can sit there for six hours trying to work something out, whereas you could have just got someone on ODES to do it for you in two minutes. Yep, yep. So you're a, an advocate of outsourcing and, and using um, you know, the, the, the vast army of, of workers around the world to help you. Yeah, exactly. I think you, know, you, you can't be everything. 
So it's better to, to get people who are specifically good at, at some other things. Um, you know, I've, I've taught myself how to code and things like that, but at a basic level. So there's lots of things that I can do myself. However, um, there is lots of back-end things I can't do. So I've always had a developer on hand for when I've needed to do things that I just can't figure out. And I know I'd sit there for six hours trying to figure it out. I probably could figure it out, but for me, time better spent, you know, working on developing the business and, and, and writing copy and that sort of stuff rather than sitting there, you know, banging my head against the wall trying to figure out why a piece of code doesn't work. Yeah, yeah so finding out what, what you're good at and focusing on that and outsourcing the rest. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So let, let's talk about Social Empire. What, what is that business? So Social Empire was set up because once I had Reminis and I had, um, obviously, the trading indicator I sold uh, you know, a bit of time ago, I had the remedies wasn't taking up all my time so you know it was rocking along and it was doing well it was making a sort of revenue but I felt like I needed something else so I started um, social empire so I could start sharing my knowledge and, and help gen wise to get them to start their own lifestyle businesses as well um, so I just started producing content creating this blog um, and getting leads through that and then selling an online startup program on the back end of that as well so when people sign up to my list um, they get sold a, uh, a, a startup program later down the track. So I was having success with um, Social Empire. That, that's why I turned the framework into the book Five Minute Business, which has further promoted the business and my online startup program. I uh, sort of differentiated myself by using the angle of growth hacking, which is a, a bit of a buzzword in the US. It's a term that explains fast growth companies like Facebook, Dropbox, and Twitter, who sort of hack their growth by you know, without much money, by leveraging technology, they really hacked their growth by, by doing some cool stuff on social media and, and getting people to share their, their, their business. Uh, growth Hacker has been traditionally seen as a market across developer, someone who understands the tech side as well as the marketing at a deep level. Um, and I'm not, I'm not, complain, I'm not um, claiming to hack companies to the scale of Dropbox or Facebook, but what I'm saying, anyone can apply growth hacking techniques to their lifestyle business or passion projects fast like I've done. Mm, um, right. So yeah, I feel like that, that, that's sort of my little angle there and I, I feel like I've got a, a good ability to communicate pretty complicated tech things to, to be understandable to, by the regular Joes. Fantastic. What are some of those tips there, Mark, in terms of the growth hacking? Just you, know, you talked about social media or Facebook. Any tips you can give people listening? Yeah, try to make sharing part of your user experience. And I'll, I'll give you a few examples. So with, with Reminisce, one of the ways that we've really scaled the business fast and we've, we've sold out our events every time is the fact that we've made that with our app, how people vote for their favourite songs. Um, you know, before we have an event, we get people to vote for their top five favourite songs and we then count down the top 50. But to vote, they, they have to use our, our native Facebook application that we, we created. Um, when they vote, their votes get shared on their Facebook wall to all their friends. And people love this because it creates a banter between all their friends and we, we get free promotion basically to all our target market. So that's how you make sharing part of the user experience. Um, similar to like what Dropbox did. They made sharing um, part of the experience by getting people to sh um, share uh, Dropbox to all their Gmail contacts. And if you did, you got an extra two gig of space straight up. It isn't like... You know, you see a lot of people go share us on Facebook and you have a chance to win. Yeah. Dropbox actually gave you something straight away. You know, there was, a, there was an immediate, um, you know, reward for, for sharing Dropbox. So, yeah. so this is how you sort of hack your growth by thinking of things to get people to share. Um, there's other ways to hack as well. Um, and hacking is really just a shortcut or thinking outside the square. So there's some good examples. So mm. you, know, if you can think of ways that you can you know, really use leverage social media and other people's databases, that, that's where you're, you're going to get a lot of cut through. Yeah. So, Mike, what about people who are, who are listening to this thinking, I've got no idea, you know, what to come up with. Maybe they've just developed a little product that they, you know, some craft product, and they thought, I wouldn't mind setting up a business, but they've really got no, I mean, I guess they should read your book, hey? <laughs> but um, yeah. where do people go to get educated on this sort of thing? I mean, obviously, there's your site, but if they don't know about you, how do people find out about these things? 
Do you mean in terms of actually building the site or coming up with an idea? Like the, the hacking ideas you've just mentioned. I mean, you know, how how do you recommend entrepreneurs? Um, get access to these kinds of ideas? Is it just exploration, investigation and attending courses and coming to conferences? You know, how do people come up to speed with this sort of stuff? Well, Google is your best friend and, and there's a lot of forums around as well that you can sort of read what people, other people are doing. You know, if you search for certain things like how to get cheap likes on Facebook, how to do this, how to do that, there is a lot of information online and then it's all about um, testing. You know, you find a strategy, and then what I do is I've got other little businesses that I test advertising strategies on to see if they work. Um, you know, I've, I've got things down to like one cent click, clicks on Facebook and things like that, and that's just based on being really targeted with the advertising. So you, what you have to do is you have to really use Google, use it as your best friend. You find some forums which are uh, got some what, good good internet marketers on there, see what they're doing. You know, even buying some products as well, some informational products can help. And then just apply what you're learning, maybe not straight to your business, your main business, but apply it to something else. Maybe start up a fan page, like a, a niche fan page that's you know, related to something that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then test some of these things you're learning. Yeah. You know, it does cost a little bit of money, but you know, these, these sorts of things can really help you out with your main business because you learn a lot as you go. Yeah. And, and speaking of information products there, Mark, uh, a lot of people think that they're a quick, rich scheme. You know, they develop an ebook of some sort and they'll sell it to millions of people. Uh, clearly, there's a lot more work behind that. But what are some of the tips that you can share with people who are specifically wanting to create information products? Yeah, you do have to be careful with information products. Um, definitely, definitely. But I think you know people are starting to sort of come aware of people who are doing scams because there is a lot of charlatans in that industry. Um, so you just need to do your research. If you are planning on buying any informational products, look at the reviews, check them out, um, do a lot more research than you normally would. And if you want to start selling informational products, firstly, obviously, you need to find a, a good niche. Um, you need to find something that has a lot of pains behind it and people are prepared to spend money on it. I think a few good ideas to find a niche is you can use things like hub pages and see what are like the most popular articles in particular niches. So you might want to go to hub pages, look up in the health section and see what people, what articles are really popular. So you might find an article that's popular on some new Japanese technique that um, you know help people lose weight. And then you go, okay, this is popular. People, a lot of people are sharing this on social media, a lot of people are reading this on hub pages. How about I create an informational product around this, and then I try and sell it online. Um, I try and, you know, if I was going to do informational products, like I already do a few, but if I was going to do um, that, I'd make sure it was something I was also passionate about and had a had a, an idea about, because I think that's where you really start to get some cut through as well. As if you start, if you create an informational product and something that you're passionate about, you, you're more likely to make it successful because it is something that you believe in. Then I think you know, your next step is to create a very cheap um, product, uh, sort of a, what would you call it, the, the P, product for prospect. You want to make a very, very cheap, good product, um, which you can sell. But prior to that, you need a, a free product you give away as well to get people um, into your list that you can then sell that cheaper product. And then on the cheaper product, you can upsell you know, higher ticket items. And then that's where you really get some start to make money on informational products. Mm, excellent, great. So it's a bit of the, the ascension system. Um, let, let's talk about untapped markets, Mark. Now, you're obviously very experienced in this area. Where do you see some untapped uh, potential that people are not really paying attention to? Any niches that you know of that you can share? Yeah, I've, I've seen a few, actually. There's heaps because a lot of the time, like I said before, there's a lot of niches where um, you know, people have started websites five to ten years ago and uh, you know, their websites are just tired and old. These people are at the front of the top of Google. So you can sort of come into these niches you know, with a brand new website, a new WordPress template that you got for $50 and just look better than everyone else and people will start buying your product instead of theirs. Um, you know, for some of these, as an example, I think alternative therapies, you know, thinking of some of these yeah, alternative therapies that people might be using to improve their health. There's heaps mm -hmm. of stuff like that. Um, 
they obviously help different fitness activities like yoga. I think there's there's a lot of opportunities in those type of space, even like yoga for men. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. A hot niche for someone to really tap into. Because you know, a lot of the time yoga is seen as very uh, feminine, but there's yeah. a lot of guys who want to get into yoga, but then they feel, oh, is it a bit girly? Yeah, 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 and they feel <laughs> out of place. Exactly. So if you made a really blokey one and, you know, you made it really sort of sporty and stuff like that, I think that you could potentially get a lot of cut through there. That's great. That's a great uh, idea. I, I might use that. Is that yeah. okay with you, Mark? <laughs> and I think that's a good point. I, I've, I've, I've covered this a few times with entrepreneurs that I've interviewed that people think, I'm going to hold my idea close to my chest because I don't want anyone to steal it. But the reality is that it's so difficult to get businesses up and running that the, the, the thought of somebody just running with your idea because you've mentioned it to them is, is pretty unrealistic, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think so, and I think it has the wrong attitude as well. You sort of, if you start thinking that your ideas are going to get stolen and that, you've got you've got the opinion that there's scarcity in the world. Yeah. Whereas if you think about abundance all the time and, and share your ideas, then it's more likely that more, um, you know, abundance and things are going to come towards your way. Yes. Yeah, lovely attitude. And and Mike, just in wrapping up, high speed broadband uh, for you as an online marketer, what opportunities do you see that opening for you? For me, I definitely think that video content is going to be the big winner out of this. Um, we'll see a bigger uptake of, of things like Google Plus Hangouts in Australia, getting big in America, and, and you know down here they're still a bit clunky due to our internet speed. Um, I can see a bigger uptake, you know, which then flows on to things like internet TV that, that stream live streamed web TV shows. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine people starting to prefer to watch TV shows of people that they want to get info off rather than sort of mass media networks where it's sort of that's push media this is going to be pull media mm -hmm. um, so yeah for example if someone liked me my views and my personality I might make a 30 minute weekly show where I talk about latest issue and trends I'm seeing in my industry people might tune into that and watch it on their their internet TV which is in their lounge room rather than you know the will and grace because you know, they have more options to consume quality content rather yeah. than sort of brain junk food that's on a lot of the uh, yep. <laughs> mass media TV yep. shows that you watch on your own. Yeah, fantastic. Great. Well, Mark, thank you so much for sharing your insights and uh, and wisdom with us. For a young man, you've certainly got a lot under your belt and you've created some amazing things. So congratulations on what you've done. And uh, I look forward to talking with you in the future. Awesome, Bernadette. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure. See you, Mark. Cheers. Bye.